If you'd like help in growing your own YouTube channel faster, apply for one-on-one -on -one coaching with me using the link below. I always wanted to prove to myself that like I was someone because so many people in middle school and high school thought I was just like this weirdo kid who like would style his hair and wear skinny jeans. I had to learn confidence through those situations. Mm -hmm. And so I think that like the gym was an outlet where I gained confidence. And I think like the more confident you are in your body, the more confident you are going to be in your head, you know? Totally. I started boxing not out of inherent interest, really it was just so I could make a YouTube video on Mike Tyson because I knew it would get good views. But even after finishing that challenge in December, something compelled me to persist. Throwing punches began serving me a reminder. The reminder that the life I want to live must on some level be built by my own two hands. No amount of journaling or fancy habit trackers can take away from that boring, simple grind. Everything built brick by brick. A great inspiration to me in this respect is Austin, my boxing coach, bodybuilding trainer, and newfound friend. On today's episode of the podcast, we discuss the power of inspired locations, the impact of getting picked on in high school, but also how valuable it is to build friendships and community. Welcome to episode 12. Roll that intro, dog. What it do, what it does, me being where you was, but it ain't what it is. Facing the mud, I really be hating the mud, said I can't pick it up, but I did. Y'all know goon put too much bass in a sub, cup full of blood, and I gave it a chug. Wait till your neighbors get all snug, and play this real loud where you live. This episode of the podcast is proudly sponsored by Acorns. With benevolence and courage, they look after the financial best interests of the up and coming, beginning with the empowering proud step of micro investing. Acorns is a zero to one saving and investing app that helps people save and invest in the background of their life. They're known especially for their roundup feature. It allows people to round up all of their purchases to the next dollar and invest the spare change without even thinking about it. So for instance, if I went to Starbucks and I bought a coffee for $5.50, Acorns would round up that purchase to $6 and that 50 cents would be invested. They also have features such as Smart Deposit, which allows you to automatically save and invest a certain percentage of your income. This amount will be moved away from your spending account before you even see the cash hit the bank, so you don't have to worry about it each month. Investing happens in the background of your life. As I've started to cultivate new and better habits, one thing that's been really important is making those habits easy with a low barrier to entry. Acorns is for beginners. You don't need to know anything to start and helps passive investing over long periods of time. They help you save and invest in the background of your life through a number of features. Not only the roundup feature, smart deposit, but also automatic recurring investments. You don't need to build the discipline. It happens in the background. Click the link in the description box to learn more. Thank you, Acorns, for sponsoring this video. For the viewers who are wondering how yeah. Austin came about as my boxing coach and kind of like my hypertrophy, he helps me, he helps me train more for aesthetics. This is how our whatever work relationship began. Friendship. Friendship. Yeah, we're starting to be friends a little bit. We can call it friendship. <laughs> well, I appreciate that, man. <laughs> <laughs> but I literally like looked at him and I, I was like, why does this guy look so good? It's fucking annoying. Yeah, of course, there's people who are bigger than you. Yeah. You're just gassing me up right away. But but you're like, you know, in like su Super Mario Kart, you're like Mario. You've got everything like at a good amount. Just and some nice, people dial, yeah. every, dial stuff too, too much. And I'm like, sure. well, I don't want to look like you. Like, even though it's it's cool, maybe, sure. for a day to yeah. be 240 pounds. Yep. You're like a lean, mean 200. 200? Yep. Mm -hmm. Have you always looked this great? <laughs> so much gas. Uh, <laughs> this, is a, this is a genuine question. Like, you've always been sure. fit and muscular, right? Um, I've always been fit simply because, one, I grew up on a farm. And so, just like bailing hay, chopping wood. Yeah, you're literally Clark, Clark Kent. So, yeah. You're yeah, like an all-American boy. Grew up in Smallville. Um, yeah. Great. <laughs> this is exactly how this episode is going to start off with me saying like, dude, you look so good. Why? Yeah, why? Explain yourself. <laughs> uh, so, growing up on a farm, you just are constantly active, one. Uh, and then I played a ton of sports my entire life. And so, I was, I was just doing stuff. Yeah. Um, and my mom got pretty health conscious early on. Mm. And so that kind of was like, we're not eating just like frozen dinners anymore at like six years old. It's like, she's going to the farmer's market before it was like farmer's markets and they were popular and she was getting like the, the farm fresh meat and produce and different things like that. It was like on organic before organic was even a thing. Mm. And so I think kind of like that just made me always care about um, like just my, my fitness and my health and not wanting to like feel like crap 
um, I'd get sick and I would just like not eat sugar for a month because I wanted to not Dang. be sick anymore. Uh, which looking back at it, I'm like, that's pretty funny that I was like a middle schooler doing this. Yeah. And then, yeah, I mean, just got into weightlifting after I graduated high school. Um, and that was kind of like the big, like I, I had the, the know-how on the nutrition side. And so then I learned. In, in, from your mom. You got from my from, mom. Yeah. yeah. From like the very like basic, like eat like real foods and like, don't just drink energy drinks and Mountain Dew and eat candy and <laughs> Diet Coke. And, um, the, well, this is what powers the episode. Yeah. Know? Yeah. Which, I, I mean, like, don't get me wrong. Like I love, like Red Bull is like one of my favorite drinks of all time. I just don't drink it anymore. Yep. Sour Patch Kids, different things like that. Like mm-hmm. I can get down with some candy and some soda. Uh, but I just learned really like early on in life where it was just like, I would only get soda when I'd go to my grandpa's cause he mm. had it. If we went out to eat. I'd have to get water. Like we wouldn't get fountain soda, you mm. know? So just like little things like that, that I never thought was a big deal growing up has now like, you know, looking to where I'm at now can see like, Oh, there's a pretty clear direction of like my thinking on health pretty early on life, you know? And so that helped. What inspired your mom to want to get healthy? It was just an instinct that she followed or was there, it wasn't in response to anything. It doesn't seem like you guys were just kind of like a proactive about living a vigorous life yeah. type family. So I think one moving. So the first like five years of my life, I grew up in like a normal kind of like suburban home. Mm. Um, and then when I turned six, we moved to the farm that my parents still live at. And I think it was just kind of like that atmosphere of being able to like grow her own vegetables and be able to like get our own chickens and different things like that kind of just like opened her up to this world of, I don't have to go to cub foods and go buy frozen food, you Mm. know, which I think is like super unique to my, my story. And so that's kind of why, um, and like most things in life, once you start rabbit holing down something, you just find more and more. And that's what she did. You know, so shout out to my mom for Dude, that's great. bringing me up right. I don't know if you feel this, but I guess you live in the heart of the city now. Yep. Or something like that. I remember when I first, uh, out of college, I moved to Los Angeles. And um, I don't know how like open you are to beliefs and things like the law of attraction or all this stuff. I feel like it maybe has been overdeveloped. Sure. It's an overdeveloped idea, but it still intrigues me because mm-hmm. living in LA with the pollution and not just that, but just like the the atmosphere of the people I was around it for me, it was a city where everyone was trying to like social climb. It was like, it was a very, the environment I was around a lot of aspiring actors and um, it's like a room full of sharks. Everyone wants something out of the other person. Mm -hmm. If if they don't feel like you provide value, they will just like move on abruptly. Um, So honestly, even at the start of this episode, you're like, we're kind of friends now. I'm like, oh, that's like a weird concept to me <laughs> sure. a little bit because I'm, I'm kind of used to, especially now, like always being curious, like, what do you want out of this? You sure. Know? Yeah. And uh, I feel like you do a great job of sustaining like community and like a connection with the natural world. Yeah. I appreciate <laughs> like, that. Yeah. You know, um, but do you feel like uh, there's something, there's a power in nature that you were able to tap into when you move from the suburbs to the farm? And do you feel like maybe you lost that a little bit now that you live in the city with your family? I mean, to your first, first question, uh, like, like I believe that we are spiritual beings living in a spiritual world, you know? And so it's just like, yeah, I do 1000% believe that where you live, who you live with, different things like that, create interactions and create connections and different things like that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I do think, um, that that's there. Um, and then moving to the city, I, I think f- my, my always challenge for myself is to not lose, um, like the community friendship side of myself. Cause that was so important to me growing up. Um, and so it's like Minneapolis is a tiny LA in a lot of ways. Cause it's a very creative city. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of people who are entrepreneurs or trying to get involved in different types of art. Um, and I just think like, I've, I've seen it. I've seen the people try to use people for different things and just, it's all about themselves. Uh, and it's just not, it's not fun and it's not genuine. And so for myself living downtown Minneapolis, doing that life, um, I feel like I've been very intentional to have like authentic relationships with people and not need anything from them. 
you know, where it's like, if I can be your friend and help take care of you and be there for you when you need me to be there for you, like odds are you're going to do the same thing for me, you know? Um, and it's just like genuine people attract genuine people. The same time, like, don't be an idiot, like have street smarts, don't get taken advantage of, be aware of how the world works. You know, it's like you going to LA, you probably learn pretty quick, like who to trust and not like who to not trust. Right. I feel like I, uh, there's a lot of that. I, I learned more once I came back okay. to Minneapolis because even the heart of Minneapolis, like, like the Northeast, mm-hmm. you're right. It has a very creative, um, inspired energy here. Mm-hmm. And a lot of YouTubers, like I coach YouTube, like aspiring YouTubers, mm-hmm. sometimes they bring up this idea, like I want to move to LA to be a YouTuber. I'm like, dude, it's in your backyard. Mm-hmm. Like Minneapolis is as creative of a place as LA yeah, because it's in sure. the people, you know, yep. like there's so many people even at our gym who are like creative entrepreneurs, mm-hmm. yourself included. And it's like, you don't necessarily have to find it in someone else's backyard. You can mm-hmm. find it here. Entrepreneurship is what you bring yeah. to any room because yep. life is just a bunch of different rooms that we're in, mm-hmm. you know? And so uh, what I, yeah, what I learned in LA is like, I learned coming back. There's like what I was trying to find there. I could have gotten here as well. Sure. It, was, it was about me becoming it, like, I wanted to be an actor. Yep. I could just be an actor, you know, like, and I didn't have to be in any particular city. I do believe though, like inspired locations Mm -hmm. change everything. Mm -hmm. And one thing I could definitively say, we both, that gym, Campiones gym, like there's, there's just something there in that space. And the people who are in that space is like my life changed once I got that gym. Oh yeah. Yeah. You're, you, when you're around a certain crowd, you just feel like going more. And I train with Austin for hypertrophy. I train like once a week with Austin and Mm -hmm. it's just like, it's hard to push myself as hard by myself but when i'm with you and i see like you are willing to sell you're willing to like being a bodybuilder mm-hmm. which maybe you would be best defined as a bodybuilder now i know you started out in crossfit but sure like, yeah at a more of a entertainment amateur yeah like, look at it i think it's very interesting and i enjoy the style of training yeah um i'm never trying to be like a ifbb pro but yes I, I appreciate what it is in the fitness industry yeah you're like you've got bodybuilding elements to your programming yes. but also a focus on athleticism yep. it's like a combination yep. you're like a hybrid athlete in some ways trying to be yeah. yeah and uh you i see you push yourself like the rare times i see you do, do like leg day by yourself or something yeah you l- live with the pain for a long time like when you're doing a set for hypertrophy mm-hmm. you're like living that pain sticks around for a while oh yeah when you're training for strength like yeah. i love whatever i don't call consider myself a power lifter i don't consider myself anything i'm, still, I'm an amateur across the board if you like power lifting you can yeah. be a power lifter yeah i i like training for strength yep. but you you kind of come in and out of the pain quickly with that it's like sure. you, you hit the squat you come back up yep. it's really taxing to the cns but you get out of it quickly yeah whereas when i'm doing like a finisher lunge set with you mm-hmm. i'm like i can't believe i'm still doing the next rep like it it feels like yeah. such immense suffering <laughs> can I do another one? I just did. I don't know how I did that. Yeah. Yep. When you started incorporating this style of training, mm-hmm. which I think, how long has it, the training, well, basically putting on mass and training for size, how long has that 2020. been? 2020. 2020. So last couple of years. Has that bled into other aspects of your life at all? Like, like you live with the pain. It's, so it's actually really interesting. So you, you kind of mentioned, but like my big entry into fitness was CrossFit. Mm-hmm. Um, and for anyone who's done CrossFit, like it's literally a mental grind. It's just like, sure, you can be strong, you can be fast, you can be whatever. But like at the end of the day, it's like, can your brain outlast like the workout, you know? Mm. Um, And that's what like I loved about CrossFit so much. And then moving more into like hypertrophy training, bodybuilding, traditional weightlifting, it has a very similar feel where it's like, can your brain and your like determination outlasts the, the feeling of like, this doesn't feel good, you know, where it's like, you want me to do like another 15 squats after we just did, you know, four sets of 15 deadlifts. And now we're doing this, you know? And I just think like, like mental resiliency is really cool to me. Um, Mm -hmm. and even as like my company has grown and it's moved forward, um, And I've rolled with all these different punches and seeing like how my mental resiliency has gone through with that. Even like 2020 where it's like every gym shut down Mm and like in the entire country. Yep. And it's like, oh, okay. Like, what do we do now? That's very painful. 
And you can like run from that and like drop it and escape and find something that doesn't hurt anymore. Uh, but it's like, you're not, you're not going to learn from that. It's like, you're just going to be bouncing around forever because eventually it's like, you're going to be put in a challenging position. That's going to be uncomfy. And you have to either lean into that uncomfiness and then most likely succeed realistically, honestly, Mm -hmm. like I find that more times that people lean into like hardness and like, again, uncomfiness, I see people nine out of 10 times will actually succeed in what they're doing, you know? And that, that one, one chance that they don't, it's because maybe they didn't know quite enough on how to like get over that hurdle. And then it's just, oh, let me learn how to get over that hurdle. And then we'll go back to this and I'll just jump over the hurdle, you know? And so, yeah, like that mental resiliency in CrossFit, in hypertrophy training, it's for sure affected just kind of my outlook and how I, I want to embrace the hard moments. I want to embrace those, those times where it's like, yeah, this actually sucks right now, but if I overcome this, I know there's growth there. You know? Yeah. I almost like wonder what my content was before I started taking training as seriously as I do now, which I mean, I just wasn't suffering so like I for me sometimes like especially like the final rounds of boxing every yeah. time we box every week the last two rounds I look like I'm gonna cry <laughs> like <laughs> this is what my face looks like yeah I don't even I don't even know what my f- expression is but I look back at the footage and yeah. I'm like damn I look <laughs> I look like I was of- tired <laughs> <laughs> yeah um and I I don't know because my channel has always been had a, a strong personal development element to it sure but I wonder, like, what did I have to say even before I started putting myself through this? Because it is an immense source of, like, self-knowledge and confidence mm-hmm. to be like, man, it's not like it was, uh, I grinded super hard all day. It was a, uh, There's a lot of joy in sure. our days as well. Yeah. But for at least two hours of the day, I, it was a, it was an act of discipline. Mm-hmm. And maybe at this point, you're just used to that discipline. So you, yeah. don't, you don't fully register it as something special. Mm-hmm. But for someone who just kind of has been starting out, like for me, I'm in my kind of ninth month of yep. serious training. It just changes your whole personality. Yeah. And it's, I feel like stupid or like I'm getting redundant because it's been like a, a through line for so many videos these last several months is like, uh, sure. when you train hard, you become a different person. Literally your face starts to look different. Yeah. And I'm not just mean like how lean or good your face looks like your eyes have more determination. In for them. sure. You've got, you've got a clearer outlook on life. My channel views have gone up substantially mm-hmm. because I'm like, whatever that thing is, I'm able to just yeah. ha- dial in on the edits, yeah. on the thumbnails, on all these elements in life. I can just say things and do things with more thoroughness. Sure. And was that something that you had to learn and build up in time? Or did you just, are you someone who was just like an early bloomer and you just caught that early? Was there ever a time where you noticed like the transformation, I guess is what I'm asking, between the boy version of you sure. and like the man you became early on? because of the work ethic. I know that sounds like I'm, I'm like really complimenting you a lot in this episode, but I feel like it's not going to change. Man, I still feel like I'm a boy. Um, (laughs) Yeah, I think it's interesting, um, like for myself, um, like growing up in a small town where honestly I wasn't really accepted in my high school. Um, How is that even possible? (laughs) Because I was, I lived in a town that was like farmers and like, tractors and mechanics and like, I like mean, shop class. sounds kind of hot, you know, like that farmer boy coming to school. <laughs> yeah, except for, except for like, I was, I was the kid, you know, I was the first one to, to buy like the Levi, like skinny jeans, uh, okay. like when the Levi's, whatever they're called, 5'11s. Okay. Those were like the first, like, like guy skinny jeans you could buy. Were you like a, like a skater boy or something or what was your... No, I just like clothes. Yeah. Okay. I like clothes. You just like apparel and that the yeah. stood out in a... You stood out in a way. For I that. stood out in a way because I like took care of myself. I bought clothes and people were like, what's wrong with you? So I assumed like, you were you just like belong. one of the popular kids. Like no, I thought no, you'd no. be one of the chads I just hated. No, no. So I was, I was on the sports teams, but yeah. like, like I was on the basketball team, like did that whole thing. Yeah. And like my friends, I had some friends in high school, but actually the majority of my friendships came from the church I was going to mm. in, in Apple Valley simply because like, like I, I felt like I was, I don't want to say like too big in the fact like I, I, like I was too big of a person, like I was too cool, but more from the fact of like, I wanted more from life than just like camo and steel toe boots. Mm. And because I wanted more than that, people in my high school looked down on me and didn't want to see me like 
be myself. And so I found other outlets for that, you know, mm. and finding my friends through my church and then getting more involved with like club sports closer to the city. Um, and then, so I, I think that was like, I always wanted to prove to myself that like I was someone because so many people in middle school and high school, like thought I was just like this weirdo kid who like would style his hair and wear skinny jeans, which Dude. is so funny to me yeah. because it's like, like that's what the whole world does. Like you, yeah. like you travel and like people like fashion is important. Um, and so it's like, I wanted to be fashionable and I wanted to be strong and I wanted to be like, I liked movies and theater and different things like that. And so like, I feel like I learned how to have that confidence because like I was super insecure when it's mm. like, everyone's making fun of you and just like, calling you this just is like, so mind-blowing to me yeah. this is the weirdest thing <laughs> i don't know if, if you're aware of your like if you were if i was a hollywood agent yeah and you came you wanted to be an actor i'd be like i know exactly what you to do with you you'd be like the handsome asshole jock jock character you'd be like the sure you'd, you'd be like the football player who's like mean to the girl and then he breaks up with her yeah and then she meets the actual yeah. nice guy it's like, like that's what that's like your, transformers <laughs> one where megan fox's boyfriend that like is yeah. like the football dude you're the guy the, she leaves for shia labeouf yeah, exactly because you're yeah. like you're like the image of that that guy <laughs> yeah. so it, it it to me it just goes to show you can't you don't know what anyone's story is until you talk to them yeah because if i didn't know you I thought you'd just be kind of mean. Sure. <laughs> and you're such a nice guy. Yeah. <laughs> and you also just said that you were like picked on and you stood out, you stood out in a bad way in middle school and high school. I'm like, what yeah. the fuck? Oh, I don't yeah. know anything about the world. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. And also it's just like, like when I was in high school and middle school, that was like the time where like, like homophobia was so like oh, prevalent. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. You know, where it's just like people would just say mm -hmm. like the most terrible things to people. You know, just because you just, styled your hair, you're gay. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's just like, like, I knew it wasn't okay then. Yo, and now like the world's caught on finally. <laughs> finally yeah. being like, yo. And at the end of the day, it's just like, who cares if someone wears skinny jeans or colors their hair or styles their hair or whatever? Like, let like let people like be who they are. You know, totally, man. And it's like, sure, there's certain like social norms that we deem as acceptable, which I think is needed. But at the same time, it's like, like I had to learn confidence through those situations. And mm. so I think that like the gym was an outlet where I gained confidence, you know? Um, and then just like realizing I was good at it mm -hmm. was just fun for me. I mean, who doesn't like being good at something? Right. Um, and so when I like saw that I was good at it, I'm like, oh, like athletics makes sense to me. Like lifting weights makes sense to me. These movements make sense to me and I can do them well. Um, and just like diving into that and becoming more confident in that. And I think like the more confident you are in your body, the more confident you are going to be in your head, you know? Totally. And it's just like how much like mental health stuff just comes from just like poor body image where it's like, yo, fitness can actually help you with that. And it helped me where it's just like, yeah, sure. I was never like, I was never overweight. I was never like, like didn't have bad acne. Like I looked pretty similar to what I do now, but I was, you know, 150 pounds. And so it's just like, like the confidence I just gained through moving my body, getting stronger, you know, getting better at just moving my body, mm -hmm. the more confident I just became overall throughout my life. So, and I want that for other people. Yeah. When I first started watching, it's called like the, the red pill, the manosphere YouTube Mm -hmm. it, it's an unfortunate niche label but um one thing that they talk about is like putting on size putting on muscle mm -hmm. um subtly affects the way the world treats you I, even in simple ways like an example a contemporary of mine gave it, the world affects you in like micro ways when mm -hmm. you just are more muscular it feels it should be a trivial thing or sure. what some might consider but like for instance you're at a restaurant and someone needs to grab an empty chair the this is what they say the 170 pound version of you they would just grab the chair the 200 pound version of you they'd be like hey man is it cool if i grab this chair <laughs> sure yeah no one's gonna like uh disrespect dwayne johnson no D did you notice any sentiment of that when you put on size like people move out of your way more or something like that um i think i noticed that people look more and uh -huh. are just more um like aware of my presence mm. <clears throat> simply one, like when I'm at a concert, 
like when I'm like navigating and again, like I don't consider myself like a big person, like considering weightlifters, yeah, but like yeah. general population, most like people walking around the street. Yeah. I'm probably going to be a little bit bigger than them. Yeah. And so like when I'm in crowds, like I for sure notice people like trying to like navigate around me or they're very, they're more aware of like not trying to run into me, you know? Yeah. Versus like you, you like you go to a concert and like everyone's just running into everyone. Like I'll usually have like a healthy, like buffer around myself, I think. And it's like, not cause I'm intimidating, yep. but like you said, there's this weird, like kind of subconscious, like, Oh, like I don't want to whatever. You there's know? a respect for it. Yeah. You know? Um, but yeah. I will say the other side of it is that people try to fight me more now. <laughs> really? Yes. So like when I go out, I get more people who are aggressive towards me and want to fight me because Dude, I they're think, just jealous because you're so sexy. That's all it is. <laughs> it's their jealousy. Yeah. They just, they love me Still so reason much. I want to fight you. Know? you. No. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I found that was super interesting because like pre-working out, like yeah. I was like, no one, I'd never gotten into any fights really other than like stupid random stuff in school. Yeah. Um, but then once I started working out and like intentionally put on size and was like trying to like look bigger, mm -hmm. like I'd go to the bars with my friends and dudes would just want to fight me for like no reason. Damn. Yeah. That's even, I find that surprising too. Yeah. Cause I kind of, I would think to stay out of the way of a bigger guy. Yeah. You know, plus they don't know, but you know how to box too. You know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got a few tools in my kit. So yeah. yeah. What advice would you give to like someone who maybe had a similar experience to you in like middle school and high school where man, they just want to be like fashionable, something mm -hmm. as trivial as that. And um, I'd say like around t uh, some portion of my audience, most of my viewers are between 20 and 30, mm -hmm. but some portion of my audience is still going through like high school or college and sure. uh, yeah, navigating some level of isolation. Yeah. What got you through that? What, is there anything you would have done differently? Sure. I mean, one, I think my community helped me a ton. Like the friends that I did have were like-minded. Yeah. So like finding people who also enjoy what you enjoy is so important because then you can actually talk about it and not feel like you're the only person doing something. Mm -hmm. um, and at the end of the day, it's like the odds are, it's like you aren't the only person who is trying to wear that shirt or wear those shoes or the, wear those jeans. Um, and then just like own it. Like if you're going to, if you're going to try to do something that's outside the box, like you got to be willing to like, people are going to say something, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's like, like hindsight, looking back at it, I can be like, yeah, like I was different than everyone else. You know, it's like, I did dress different. I presented myself differently. Like I, I cared how I looked, you know? Um, and that's going to cause people to look, you know? And so it's like people who are going against the grain of what their current, like, social surrounding is it's like you're going to take flack from that and it's either going to be because someone's just a jerk and they're just mean or it's going to be it is going to be jealousy because people are like oh i wish i had the courage to do that mm -hmm. and so just like own the fact that it's like you made the decision to put on that outfit whatever it is and just like be authentic to that like that's that's you be confident in that you chose to put on those sneakers, like wear those freaking sneakers. Don't let anyone tell you not to wear those sneakers. You know, it is only just uh, in the last year, a little less than the last year occurred to me that sheer power of finding inspired locations and finding different communities. Mm -hmm. Cause you don't know different elements of your personality or like the different kinds of people you could run into, even in your own radius, your own neighborhood. Sure. You know, one of my coaching clients, he lives in New York City and um, he's like, you know, one of the things he struggles with, he's like, I don't have a life. Most of my people I coach is like you for YouTube. Yeah. But for him, I'm more of like a life, life coach. Sure. Yeah. Um, and he, he's like, I don't have a life. I'm like, what do you do in the evenings? He's mm -hmm. like, I just stay at home. I was like, all you have to do straight up is find any place. There's, you're, first of all, you live in Queens. There's so many cool places yeah. around. You're like, surrounded by cool things. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, go to an MMA fight gym. Yeah. Take an improv acting class. Go volunteer for something dope. Mm -hmm. I don't care. Take pottery. Mm -hmm. Go somewhere. And he's like, well, I don't know. Like, what if it's... I'm just like, you don't have to commit to any of these things. Yeah. But you, you'd be blown away by like all the cool people around you up to cool things who would sure. welcome you to their community. Yeah. And that's what I felt like with Compionis and a few other things that I've tried out. It's like... Yeah. Going into that space, I was definitely intimidated. It was yeah. a little more of a hardcore vibe at first. For sure. 
And I think, to be honest, I still am kind of ner- sometimes a little socially uh, so, uh, conscious. That's fine. About how I present. But yeah. I do like being there. Like, it's a very inspired place. Yeah. And, like, we can all find inspired places. So, like, yeah, maybe high school, college, the workplace, maybe mm-hmm. you stand out a little bit. Maybe, maybe you don't feel like you're a part of the crew. Mm-hmm. But you can find a crew, and yeah. it could be a badass crew of bandits, but up to up to dope things. Absolutely, I think honestly, like one of the most impressive things about you, since I've gotten to know you, is your ability to keep trying new things despite knowing that, like, one, you may have zero idea what you're doing, um, and two, it's like you don't really care, <laughs> like, like how many new ventures you've taken on since like the last like months of training of like learning to fly, getting your motorcycle license, uh, learning to play guitar, getting more into box, like all these different things, which is like most people are too intimidating to do like one thing Mm -hmm. where they're like, oh my gosh, I don't know if I should go like play the guitar. I'm going to look so stupid. It's like, you're like, I don't care. I'm going to go learn how to do like seven new things. So that's like super cool to me because I think that's going to like, that type of attitude is going to like continue to bring more success for you because it's like, you never know until you try something and you might as well try it to see if you like it or not, or if you might be good at it or not. And then from there, make the decision. Like don't, don't count yourself out of the equation until you even try to put yourself into the equation. For me, what a triggered, I appreciate that. But what triggered a lot of wanting to try out these new ventures is realizing it's unfortunately, it's such a cliche to say this, but I have felt it in my body to be how true it is. The limitations are just all in my head. Mm -hmm. And here's, here's a micro example. It's like money related. So I hope everyone's cool with me saying it, but like, um, back in 2020, the channel, my channel started making money for the first time. Mm -hmm. It made $2,000 in May of 2020. And then that was the month I met Thomas Mm -hmm. and I decided right away. I was like, Thomas, I have two grand. How many hours can I get out of you? Because I just know (laughs) like, uh, uh, you know, let me just invest in things that will make this channel bigger. By the fall, we hit five figures for the first time. And it was still like a couple of, you know, videos a month. And once again, pretty much I, (laughs) if you look at my, um, the money coming in and out because I still had my day job, it was like almost like all being spent back on gear and equipment and just trying to learn this thing called cinematography. Mm -hmm. And then it was just this last month where I was like, I wonder now that as having been a filmmaker for a few years now, how much should I be charging? I created, I created this number that was absolutely just didn't even make sense for what we've been making so far. And, uh, I was like, I actually have no idea how I'm going to achieve this Mm -hmm. as usual, a brand deal offer came in. I'm not Mm going to say what it was or that the video is still being made and all that stuff. But like I had just said that crazy number in my head and I was afraid of that number. Mm -hmm. And then I just, uh, emailed it to that brand for the first time. I was like, uh, considering this video is like this, this is the rate. Mm -hmm. And I thought they would come back like laughing at me. Like, are you kidding me? Mm -hmm. And uh, it was just like, yeah, sure. And I was like, what? That is just like a a micro example. Like Mm -hmm. money is just one terrain of life. Sure. For sure. But there's so many things where I'm like, I'm not good at this. I'm not good at running. I'm a slow runner. And then I ran, I I, I trained for speed for a while. Mm -hmm. What has incentivized me wanting to try all these new things is I'm afraid of where I'm limiting myself because mm-hmm. all those limitations are not mm-hmm. real, man. Yeah. And uh, a lot like young guys, we, we all like we're, people are trying to figure out different things. Mm-hmm. Some guy looks at a really pretty girl and he's like, she's too pretty for me. Mm-hmm. Like I am not worthy of this. Sure. Some girls feeling the same, same way about herself. And it's like, yeah. we have to, we have to like really consider where that's coming from. Mm-hmm. Cause half the time is, it's just more than half the time. It's not true. Yeah. Oh, it's so real. And I feel like I sounded like a, a stupid inspirational person, like saying all that. No, not at all. <laughs> but it's just, it's, yeah. like, it's been my perception yeah. in recent months. I mean, months. it's like to each own's faith is like what you're going to get, you know? Yeah. It's like if you have this faith for small things, you're only going to get small things. But if you have the faith for big things, like odds are you're going to get those big things. That's, you know? that's a cool word you just used. Yeah. And something that I'm curious about, you had mentioned basically start off, started off with the word spirituality, Mm -hmm. like we're spiritual beings. And then you just mentioned the word faith. Mm -hmm. And I I don't just mean like in a religious context, even though even I'm very open and open-minded. I consider myself, yeah. So I believe in something. (laughs) I believe myself, I believe in something, you know, I just, I just don't define it well. My only, my only um, religion and practice is to meditate regularly. 
that's like how I try to like practice yeah. spirituality. Yeah. Um, outside of that, I'm very like unsure of myself about my beliefs. Sure. But um, how does like spirituality and faith translate into your conduct and like more specifically like the goals you set for yourself? Like for sure. What what is that conversation like for you for you and yourself? Yeah, I mean, I think when it comes to like belief specifically in a higher power like that's such core to your identity where it's like entire entire nations are built off of ideologies that are about a higher power right Mm -hmm. and so it's like for myself like my faith is super important where it's like like a lot of the decisions i make are based off of like the ideology that i live by you know Um, and it's like for myself, it's like, I believe in Jesus and it's like Jesus's representation in the Bible was someone who was loving to everyone, cared for the widow and the orphan, um, and then was interested in trying to make the world a better place, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's like, whether you believe in the Bible or not, we can all pretty much agree that like Jesus as a historical figure was a pretty good dude, you know, like most, like most religions, like we'll be like, yeah, Jesus was like, cool, you know? And even people who don't believe in Jesus as like a religious figure are like, yeah, like loving people, helping people, taking care of people, like those are good vibes, Yep. you know? Um, and so for myself, it's just, it's just easy to like want to, like it's not easy necessarily to do that, but to mm-hmm. aspire to be like that for me is like, of all the things I could believe in the world, like me trying to love people well, take care of people well, um, and just try to leave the world better than I found it. Mm -hmm. Those are all things that like, like I want that to be my legacy, you know? Totally. And it's just like, I mean, part of the reason why I have the job that I have, it's like, sure. I love, I love health and fitness for myself, but like nothing gets me more excited when I'm working with people who don't have hope, who feel like they no longer have dignity because of, they feel trapped within their bodies. And then I get to help them see how capable they actually are you know, into our earlier conversation, that confidence then bleeds into other areas of their life, you know? Mm -hmm. And so it's just like so much of what I do is based off of this thought process of like, how can I, like, how can I not just help myself, but how can I help other people, you know? And it's like, how can I bring those people with me? Like life, life is so much more fun when you're with people. Like it sucks when you're alone. Like being alone is not fun. Yeah. Taking time to yourself is great. Yeah, but yeah. feeling alone and being alone is the worst feeling that anyone can feel, you know? Yeah. On that note, it does seem like the cultural zeitgeist in general has mm-hmm. moved towards more isolation. Mm-hmm. You work very hard to build and maintain a sense of community. Like it, you, you were not, maybe not hard, but with intention. Yes. You were intention about building community and building people up around you. Mm -hmm. But I would argue that the culture culture at large, I think this might be largely driven by, well, I don't know, the way we consume media and how we we portray our lives on Instagram and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. There's a lot more isolation. Yeah. There's this quote that I had once heard, like everyone who wants to be famous just needs community. And then they would solve that itch to be famous. (laughs) You know? (laughs) Um, What, are some things you do to build community. How do you build community from the ground up? Like mm-hmm. uh, for me, myself, I don't have a ton of friends, mm-hmm. like straight up. Um, it's funny, like now some of my coaching clients are turning into friends, but like most people I interact yeah. with on a daily basis and like even joke around with, mm-hmm. we're all like working together, you know? We're, sure. all, like, we're all on the payroll of like <laughs> YouTube's. <laughs> we have to be feed. here because the money's here. Yeah, sure. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> we all work for YouTube. You know, yeah, we're all employees. Right. Um, so what do you do to build community? What do you do to maintain that? And um, what would you advise someone who's like starting from like ground zero with friendship sure. even? Yeah. Um, I mean, to your point earlier about um, your your client in, in New York, it's yeah. like one, like what's around you? You know, like what can you get involved in with what's around you? Like, is it a gym? Is it a, you know, is it a restaurant that you want to be a regular at? You know? So it's like, like, the, for example, there's a restaurant right next to our gym called Vivir. Okay. I started going there every single day because I wanted, I wanted to be a regular there. I wanted to get to know people there. Mm. And now I know people by name there who I consider maybe not like close friends, but they're people who I can invite to my birthday party or like, get a drink with later at night, you know, and different Mm -hmm. things like that. So it's like step one is just like 
do something, <laughs> you know, yeah. like you have to do something where there's people. Yeah. You know? yeah. And so it's like, figure out what you're interested in and do it. Like if, if you love painting, take a painting class, you know, it's like, you might be the best one there or you might be the worst one there. You're probably going to find someone who also likes painting and you can just like catch a vibe. Um, and then just for myself, like I try to never, like I try to never limit myself based off my own point of view where I think it's really easy when you meet new people to write people off simply because they may not look like you or they may not sound like you or they may not X, Y, Z versus being like, okay, this person's very different from like what I would expect in a normal friend for me, what, what I, what I think I should have for a friend. Mm. Um, but like still investing in that. And, um, one of my new friends, uh, he goes to Los and he's, he's one of the weirdest dudes I've ever met. And I tell, oh, yeah. I, I tell him that straight to his face, you know? Um, and so like initially I was just like, oh yeah, this dude's cool. Like I like him, but I'm like, I'm not trying to like hang out after hours with this dude. He's, mm. he's, we're both here at the gym cause we both work here. We're getting paid, you know, to your YouTube point. Yeah. But when I like lowered my guard and was just like, who cares if he's different and thinks different than me? Like we both like working out. Maybe there's more to just our like relationship than that. And it turns out there was, and now it's like we hang out every week in like yeah. in this season of life. He's one of my favorite people, you know, mm -hmm. but it's just like, I never saw myself becoming friends with this dude. <laughs> yeah. Not because he was a bad dude or anything like yeah, that. Yeah. He was just so much different than anyone I've ever expected to be a friend with, you yeah. know? But it's just like, I'll just lower one. I like got out of my own head and got out of my own, like self-conscious, like what are people going to think of me? Um, and then I just got rid of my expectations of who I think I should be friends with. You mm -hmm. know, it's like, there's so many cool people who are completely unassuming. And once you start to talk to them, you're like, oh, dang, like you are so interesting and you are so passionate and you have so much in life that you want to do. And I want to like have a small part of that with you, you know, to that point, that kind of reminds me. So I just got my motor license, motorcycle license, mm -hmm. as you kind of said, and you've been riding a long time. Mm -hmm. um, just kind of interacting briefly with like some people in the motorcycle community, which yeah. is just like my riding instructor and the people at like BMW, Richfield, like not, not a bunch of people yet. Sure. There's such a vibe to a, like the classic motorcyclist that I'm like now becoming familiar with. Mm -hmm. Some of these dudes, they got bandanas and long beards and like sleeves, tattoos. Yeah. Like some of these guys look like classic biker dudes, you like know, sons like of anarchy. Sons of, sons yeah. of, there's a, a lot of guys with these like sons of anarchy vibes. Sure. And even my like riding instructor, mm -hmm. super cool guy, a lot from his face, you wouldn't like expect him to be. Cause he looks like this, like he looks like he's just like was, came off a bike always. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, but he, the good the guy worked on wall street. He's flown planes. Yeah. He's like a very, very cool guy and amazing business yeah. acumen, even though his like uh rider Academy, Instagram needs a revamp sure. that we're going to help him with cool. like his inf his knowledge of influencer marketing is super strong. Mm -hmm. I bet you like growing up, if my mom saw these people, some of these people, she'd be like, oh, you probably want to stay away from them. They're probably going to yeah. like want to give you drugs. <laughs> <laughs> Those are bad people. Don't, yeah. don't hang out yeah. with them. Just because they got yeah. the sleeves and the tough face. Sure, yeah. But uh, you you don't, you never know mm -hmm. when you might catch a vibe that you could actually learn from. And yeah. like, it could be an inspired connection. Mm -hmm. Like I had all these assumptions about you mm -hmm. that I didn't even mean to have. They, they weren't even like consciously formed thoughts. Sure. But like when I first came across you, I think you still, you had like a man bun and you're like freaking, when you're at the gym, your arms just look enormous, you uh -huh, know? Yeah. I just, I don't even know what I thought of you, Sure. but I never thought I would talk to you. Sure. Uh, and like now knowing your story a little more, I'm like, mm -hmm. there's so much I did not anticipate. Mm -hmm. I completely misjudged so many aspects of you. Some things that like do map out, sure, but well, there's yeah. probably only like 15%, Yeah. you know? So you gotta, be, I guess what you're saying is you gotta be open-minded about people. Yeah, hundred percent. But at the same time, it's like I can, I often struggle with this. Like I can get myself to to the shop. Like you said, you you go to this cafe. You're like you're going to be a regular here. You're going to yep. know the people there. I can get myself inside the cafe. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I still have this like social anxiety. I don't know how to start up a conversation often. Sure. Like even when I I came up to you for training. Yeah. 
I kind of had to be like, is this weird? <laughs> <laughs> Do it. Should I say words right now? I was like, should I say words right now? Yeah. Genuinely. But yeah, I'm like, yeah. hey, well, he was training this other guy. So he probably will train me if I pay him. Yeah. Honestly, a way. <laughs> if I give for, him money. Honestly, and then, and then yeah. I venmo you right away. It was a, yeah. a way for me, for me to be like, by the way, I'm not weird. Like yeah. I, well, I want you to train yeah. me. <laughs> no, I, I mean, I, I appreciate the, the quick response on Venmo, you know, <laughs> didn't have to hunt you down. Well, oftentimes if like someone wants I've noticed this mm. myself. So if someone wants to like connect with me, some power players have done this recently. They mm. will book a coaching call with me. Oh yeah. And I'm like, I will get on a discovery. I get on like a quick 15 minute call before I actually talk to people. Mm. And I'll be like, can I even help you? And then this one guy I talked to him. I'm like, I can't help you. Yeah. Like, you're just like a cool young kid. Like, what do you want from me? Yeah. And he didn't, he didn't want to grow a YouTube channel. So I'm like, what do you just, you just go live your great life, dude. He, yeah. like, he was going to Europe later that week. I'm like, okay. just go <laughs> be yeah. happy. And then he's like, I just want to talk to you. I want to, he's like, I just want to pay you. I want to book a coaching call with you. And I was like, okay. Yeah. And then we got on the call and then 30 minutes into the call, I realized he's like this fantastic copywriter. Oh wow. Okay. Like he makes amazing landing pages cool. and I am working on my first few product launches. Okay. And then I was like, can I just hire you to like, yeah. <laughs> and now we're like semi becoming friends. Yeah. And I've noticed this with a few of them. It's yeah. like, oh, it actually became, um, and in, in, into friendship what started off as a professional sure. gesture i guess sure yeah are you would you say that you're like good at just like st starting up conversation with people like um you, depends on the situation yeah i will um and i think it like what i realize is that like the person i'm about to talk to if i don't know them yeah is probably just as like aware of themselves as I'm being aware of myself and yeah. we're both feeling as awkward as they're like, I don't like walk into like a party where I don't know anyone. And I'm just like, I'm going to be everyone's best friend. But like, I've, I've just become, yeah, I don't know. Like understanding enough on how people work where it's like, if I feel self-conscious, they probably feel self-conscious right now. Mm -hmm. So it's like, if we're both in the same boat, like why can't we talk, you know? Totally. And then also just not asking like questions that put in, like, don't ask yes or no questions. Like open ended questions are always the best, mm. you know? That's and a it's, smart little. And, and that's where it's like, even if it's like, if it's the barista at your coffee house, it's just like, yo, yo, what, what are you going on? Like, what's going on today? What are you up to? You know? Mm. And then it's like, they'll start talking and be like, oh, that's super interesting. You're going to this restaurant. I haven't heard of that. Have you been there before? Oh, it's your first time? Sweet. I should have to check it out. I'm going to be in tomorrow. Let me know how it goes. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's like as simple as that. It's just like that little touch point. One makes them feel valued Two, like starts an interaction where now it's like you're a safe person that they can actually like talk to, mm -hmm. you know? And then three, now you have like a homie at the coffee house that might hook you up with a free coffee, you know? Uh, and so it's just like ask open-ended questions. Don't, don't, and, and honestly, sometimes ask questions that you already know the answer to, you know? Totally. Where it's like, that way you're not surprised where you're like, oh, wait, what? You know? Mm. And so I've just found the more I ask people questions, the easier it is to have a conversation, you know? You know what's been cool about this is normally I go into a podcast episode knowing the title and thumbnail of the video I'm trying to get basically I'm like trying to extract a certain title and thumbnail out of a person sure. in advance. I don't mean to be like that, but it's like the algorithm turns you into a certain kind of person. No, I mean, it's strategic, <laughs> which is smart. It's strategic. Yeah. And going into talking with you, we kind of like, we worked out together the other day and mm -hmm. I, I knew I wanted you on, uh, but I didn't know exactly what the thesis of our conversation would be. Sure. And it, it came together kind of fast. And I, I, I thought to myself like, Hmm, what do I want to know from Austin? I mean, obviously the, the hypertrophy bodybuilding element of things, just the, the knowledge around fitness. Sure. And then early on in the conversation, I was like, you know, you have a connection to the natural world. You have a connection to faith. That's something I could tease out, uh, out of you and make the thesis. Mm -hmm. But dude, the main through line and what you represent to me as a person right now is just a community builder. Mm -hmm. And I never would have anticipated that from you. Mm -hmm. because of my own ju like in prior judgments of sure. you you know unconscious but that's bias. so cool yeah unconscious bias yeah but it's so cool that you were like an embodiment of community building mm -hmm. and i think that's been like the that's been like the biggest takeaway from this episode yeah that's sweet so dude uh thanks so much for coming out thanks for dropping yeah. by here we're thanks gonna hopefully 
ride motorcycles together at some point. Yeah, we can make it happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm down. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll I'll catch you. Well tomorrow at your birthday party can't wait <laughs> yeah it's gonna be a vibe. um yeah this has been episode 13 of the becoming the killer podcast greatness is coming podcast might as well call it that that's great if you enjoyed this episode and you liked what austin had to say he's got an online fitness company you, you can find uh, all of his information in the description box his instagram his coaching services super cool guy especially if you're training for aesthetics definitely check out his stuff. He's like the most aesthetic guy I know. If you enjoyed the video, you like the channel, consider subscribing to the channel. We're both on Instagram. If you want to grow your own YouTube channel and you want to work with me one-on-one -on -one and get better watch time, better engagement, there's also a link to that in the description. Just check out all the links if you like it. Oh, the podcast is everywhere. Podcasts can be found. This is the worst delivery of the call to action I've ever done, but it's authentic, bro. <laughs> we keep it real around here. So just all I'm saying is, fuck with us in whatever way you want anyway <laughs> that's been this episode we'll catch you guys next time cheers <laughs>